My name is Gavin Evans, and this is my review of Scream. No, 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 not that Scream. The new 2022 Scream. I really hate it when sequels take the name of the first movie in the franchise and reuse it. It's just such a lazy, awful way to name your movie. Because now whenever someone's like, hey, want to watch Scream? You've got to be specific if you're talking about the 1996 one or the 2022 one. It's just unneeded and uh, I just really hate the fact that they named the Scream instead of Scream 5. But this will be a spoiler filled review so if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Then come back and watch my review because I will be going in depth. Now this is a movie that I wanted to be excited for but I just couldn't bring myself to be. I love the first Scream. The second one is really good. The third one isn't good, but it's not bad either. And Scream 4 is really good. So it's a franchise that has a 75% success rate, and even the bad one isn't all that bad. But that said, Wes Craven sadly passed away, and the directors of Ready or Not were going to take over this movie. And I liked Ready or Not, but I'm just like, ah, uh, is... Can they recreate what Wes Craven did so perfectly with this franchise? And the answer is no. Let's first talk about the cast. Let's mention the new names first, beginning with Sam Carpenter. Wow, I wonder how they came up with that last name. Uh, she's played by Mo Melissa Birria. And I thought Melissa did a good job in In the Heights, but I thought she was absolutely awful in this movie. Like, I don't want to sound mean, but she just lacks any sort of personality or charisma. She just came across as bland and as generic as characters can. And there's this whole thing with her character where she sees her dead dad. And it's only there for the intention of misleading the audience, but anytime it popped up, it just felt like a totally different kind of movie and it never works. Then we've got Jenna Ortega, who plays Tara Carpenter, and I like this actress and ex. I thought she was really good in that movie. Here, not so much. I Once again, I just thought she was really bland, that she lacked any bit of personality. And I really couldn't have killed less for this sister relationship that they had there were times where they were really amping up the melodrama and it just felt so artificial and the emotional weight that they wanted this movie to have just was never there not even close then we've got jack craig playing richie and this was easily the best of the new characters i thought jack brought a lot of charisma and personality into this character and he's the one person in this movie who I feel like could have been a character in the first Scream movie. But that said, the fact that they made him the villain just didn't really work for me at all. It was just so predictable and I thought they were going to be more surprising than that. But nope, they won't. Then we've got Mickey Madison as Amber. And this is just a nothing character. When she's revealed to be the other villain at the end, I'm just like... Who again? Like we spend like no time with her. So it has zero impact whatsoever. Like we see her at the very beginning of the movie and again at the end. But it feels like there's a good hour where we don't see her at all. Then we've got Dylan Manite in this movie who's hardly in it at all. He didn't really leave an impact whatsoever. He He's just kind of there. Then we've got Jasmine Savoy Brown. And for the majority of the movie, I thought she was really bland and boring, but in the last act of this movie, they started to give her a personality, but it was just too late by that point. Then we've got Mason Gooding, who I thought was really bland and boring. And then we've got this character played by Sonia Imar. And when the movie's in its last act, and we see her in a relationship with Mason Gooding's character, I'm just like, have we seen this character before this scene? Was she in the beginning of this movie at all? And I honestly couldn't tell you. I just thought she was a really bland and forgettable character. So out of eight new characters, only one stands out in any way. That is not good. But then we've got the old characters, the legacy characters returning. And how did they handle them? Awful. In fact, I think the legacy characters were completely unneeded in this movie. 
They had no connection to the plot whatsoever. The only reason they're in this movie is that it's another Scream movie, so we've got to get the original cast back. And they just feel so tacked on. It feels like fan service for the sake of it. Because they have no purpose in the story or with the characters, they're just there. Let's talk about Dewey, because when Dewey first appears in this movie, David Arquette is just so likable in the world that when we first see him, the movie comes alive for a short little bit. But the way they handled this character, I thought was a massive spit in the face of the fans. I hate the fact that they killed him off, but the way it went down honestly really pissed me off. Like, they're getting attacked in this hospital, they shoot Ghostface a couple times in the chest, they're about to escape, and then he's just like, uh, you know, I should go back and just make sure he's dead. Like, he's always been a bit of a bumbling fool, but by this point, he should have learned. In fact, they clearly established that he has learned from his experiences when he tells Sam the rules. So then he goes back to Ghostface, Instead of just shooting him in, in the head, right from the get-go, he takes as long as possible to do so, just in time for Ghostface to kill him. And it was just like, I, I can't believe they just killed off this iconic character like that. And it doesn't have any weight afterwards. He dies and the movie goes on like nothing happened. We see Gale really upset for a few seconds. But the movie goes on just like it would have if he wasn't in the movie at all. Like if he survived, the movie would have played out exactly the same way. You could have replaced Dewey with anyone. And I, I want them to start treating main characters like main characters again. Because they always bring back these characters and then just shove them to the background and just feel like they can do whatever with them. And I'm just getting tired of it. Like I like Glass. I thought that was a pretty decent movie, but I hated the fact that they killed Bruce Willis off in that movie in such an ineffective manner. They're just like, really? That's how David Dunn goes out. Like that. And that's kind of my reaction to this movie. And I really hate the fact that him and Gail got divorced. I'm hating this trend of any time they bring back a couple from a franchise, they are always split up or divorced now. And it's a trend that I'm getting really sick of. Why can't they have a happy ending? Why not? Why couldn't we see them together in this movie and they're happy together, they've been married for a while now, they have a couple kids. Can you imagine how nice that would have been? But nope, they gotta go for, oh, uh, they split up. I, I don't like that decision at all. And then we've also got Gail Wessels in this movie who I'm not going to talk about nearly as much as I talked about Dewey because the truth is she just has nothing to do. She's in this movie for the sake of having Gail Wessels in another Scream movie. Same with Sydney Prescott. She has no effect on this movie whatsoever. She's in it for the sake of it. Courtney Cox and Nev Campbell do just fine in the movie but they're not given anything to work with. Like if you're going to bring back old characters, have a reason. Have it be meaningful, because otherwise it's just fan service and that's what it feels like here, but the treatment of these characters is anything but fan service, so it's a lose-lose. Now the story itself I also found to be quite awful. The mystery that in the way it plays out is completely unsatisfying, and there's just nothing about this movie that allows it to stand out. It just feels like another Scream movie. And every Scream movie is about something specific. The first Scream movie is about slashers. The second Scream movie is about sequels. The third Scream movie is about the concluding chapter. Scream 4 is about remakes. So they had nowhere to go with this movie and what was this movie about? It tries to comment on a bunch of different things and just ends up falling short of every one. It tries to be about elevated hall, it tries to be about the recalls, it tries to be about toxic fandom, and just none of it works in any ways. Like the whole idea of trying to make it be about recalls, that's not even a thing. It's some random made up term that somebody made up, probably on Twitter, it's a sequel with the original cast returning. 
That's what a RICO is. And it only works if there was a period of time where we didn't get the original cast. But considering that we've had Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette in every single Scream movie, it's the original cast appearing in another Scream movie. And even if that was the case, a RICO is still just a sequel. They're just trying to make it seem more complicated. When she's talking about the RICO's midway through the movie, I'm just like, this just sounds so incredibly messy. And then they also try to make this movie be about Elevated Hall. Jenna Ortega's character is always talking about her favorite movies, The Barbadook a few times. And it just feels like that's all they have going with this idea. Like if they actually dedicated themselves to this idea, I think it could have really worked and made a statement on where horror is because I would say that horror movies don't have fun anymore. They take themselves too seriously. And if this movie looked and felt like an A24 movie, but it was Scream 5, I would have been like, that was a ballsy whiskey move and it paid off. But instead we just get a few mentions to the Barbadook and it just rings hollow. And then the toxic fandom angle of this movie just doesn't work. It's a complete mess. It's not even present really until the very end of the movie. It just feels like it comes out of nowhere. Like whatever you want to be about, make it clear from the start. But this angle is completely reliant on you thinking that Sam is the killer looking for revenge against Sydney. That is what this entire angle is reliant on. But at no point does it feel like we're actually in that movie. At no point would I buy it. Like if they set that up, that's oh she's gonna want revenge against Sydney, and it was the most basic generic secret idea they could have come up with, and then they pulled the rug from underneath and was made a commentary on toxic fandom and expectations and what you get, that could have been really great. But at no point did I think Sam was a villain. At no point did it feel like they were trying to make her seem to be the villain. And then it just has nothing to say about it. Like, I think toxic fandom is not when people hate a bad Star Wars movie, but when people attack others for not having the same opinion. Lean into that or something. Like, have a scene where they're debating on what horror movies are good and not. And then just have the villain motivation be he killed someone because he didn't like hereditary. I think that could have been a great commentary on criticism these days. But the movie doesn't do that. It just feels like a mishmash of a bunch of half-assed ideas and nothing comes together. And it's quite frankly just a retread. There is no risks that this story takes. There is nothing new here. I wish horror sequels would switch up locations more often so it feels different. And the Scream franchise has kind of done that up until this point. Like the first Scream takes place in a neighborhood. The second Scream takes place in a school. The third Scream takes place in a Hollywood studio. The fourth Scream goes back to the neighborhood, but it's a remake, so it's kind of expected to. But like if this movie took place on a cruise ship or something to make things interesting, I would have really appreciated that. And... The kills in this franchise have always just been people getting stabbed. And I just feel like you could switch it up, find ways to do more unique kills. And it just retreads so many things that we've already seen from this franchise. When this movie begun, I'm just like, they're just recreating the first scene in the first movie, but with texting added into it. And it's just... A lesser version of that scene. Like Scream 2's opening takes place in a movie theater. They switched it up. Scream 3's opening... T mm, I don't actually remember Scream 3's opening. But Scream 4's opening went super meta and delivered something really unique with what we were familiar with. But this just feels like the same old same old. Like there's even a point in the last act of this movie where someone's watching the first screen. And it's one of my favorite scenes in any horror movie ever when... They're watching the TV and the guy's yelling at the TV, Look behind you, you idiot. Come on. He's talking about how stupid the guy in the movie is. Meanwhile, someone's sneaking up behind him. That's just a brilliant scene. I love it. But this movie does the exact same thing with the first Scream movie. And I think the movie thought it was being clever, but you're just showing the exact same scene. Like, just because... You added an 
extra meta layer to it doesn't mean it feels any different. It just feels like a lazy and wet retread. And just because you bring it up, just because you point it out, doesn't mean it's okay. It's still very lazy. And there's just so many opportunities where they could have switched up the formula here. Like, you could have had it so there's three killers this time. Or even more than that if you wanted to. Really go bonkers with it. Or the scene where Dewey dies, it would at least be interesting if he killed the one ghost face there. And then there was only one for the rest of the movie. That would have been a nice switch up of the formula. But they just played out like every other movie. And it's just like... Why would I ever watch this movie again when the first screen movie does everything this movie is trying to do in much superior? Now, the directing by Matt Bitellini, Oatlin, and Tyler Gillett, I didn't think was really good. Now, I really like Ready or Not. I think that is such a great horror movie with one of the best endings to any horror movie ever. I didn't like Devil's Do all too much, but I did like their segment on VHS, but this is easily the weakest directing. Like, I think this movie lacks any bit of style or personality, and it just feels very safe. On top of that, the pacing drags in this movie. Like, I was surprised when this movie turned out to be less than two hours because it felt so much longer. And like, when Dewey dies, I thought it was near the end of the movie, but we still had like 50 minutes left. And I'm just like, oh man, this is a really poorly paced and structured movie. And there's also some small things that the directors just don't put any effort in. Like, there's a scene where they kill someone outside in broad daylight. And just nobody sees it. Nobody reacts. There's a scene where they're after the sister in the hospital. And she's making her way down the hospital. And there's one security guard and that's it. The rest of the hospital just feels completely empty, completely lifeless. And I understand that they moved her to a private sector of the hospital, but you really expect me to believe that there's no one else on that floor? It just feels lazy and if it, it, it just doesn't work for me. I thought it was a very boring sequence because it felt so lifeless. Now, I do like some things that they did. I do like how they play around with the door opening cliche. You know, when someone opens the fridge door, they look in the fridge, and then they close it, and someone's right there. They know you're expecting that, and they play around with it a few times. Like the scene where the kid from 13 Reasons Why dies. You know, he opens the door. Is someone there? Closes it. Nope. A few more times. And then the one time where he closes a door that isn't shot like that, that's when he gets killed. I thought that was a nice play on that trope. And I love, love the paranoia factor to it. Like, that was easily the best part of this movie for me. Like, at the end of the movie, when everyone's so aware that anybody could be Ghostface and no one trusts anyone, I thought it made for some funny sequences, some tense sequences... And I wish that element was present throughout the entire movie. Like, it would have just been insane even if, like, people started killing each other in self-defense because they're just so paranoid. And they don't go that bonkers with it, but I still like that angle. And the kills are very brutal. Not really memorable, but brutal. The only kill I'm going to remember in this movie is when the sheriff dies because... You think that he's about to kill the kid, and then he's waiting for her. I thought that was a really clever, shocking kid. That said, I'm not going to remember any other scenes, because they just recreate scenes. I don't find this movie to be all that tense. I didn't find it to be funny much at all. And there's one scene at the end, where Richie has a gun going after Sam. And like he could have shot her, but he goes after her with the gun like it's a knife, and... Did he accidentally get the gun and knife prop switched up? But that moment really took me out of it. But look, I want to love this movie. I love this franchise. But this is a huge step down. It's the first movie in this franchise in which I'd say it's bad. It's got its moments. I like Jack Craig in it. But the rest of the cast is completely bland and forgettable. The legacy cast members coming back feel completely useless in this story. The story itself just tries to tackle all these ideas and themes and it just fails at absolutely every single one of them. The mystery wasn't satisfying at all. When you get your answers in the end, you're just like, really? That's it? It retreads so many elements from the first movie. It's just... 
a really big disappointment. You could get some entertainment value from this movie, but not much. So I'm going to go ahead and give Scream 2022, because I have to specify the year, a 4 out of 10. Okay, have you seen Scream? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.